guys, welcome back to the Stuff of Legend. My name is D'Lo and I have another video for you guys. Today I'm going to be talking about Cyborg! Booyah! But not just the one from the Justice League, who is played by Ray Fisher, but I'm here to tell you guys that DC's TV show that is going to be exclusively uh, um, put out for viewership on the DC streaming service. Sorry about that verbiage, is a little weak, but I uh, ran out of words for you. Anyway, on the DC streaming service, they're going to be putting out Doom Patrol, and it's going to be starring Cyborg, played by an actor, let me just get the name, because it's a little bit odd, Jovian Wade. So Jovian Wade, who is 25 years old, which is actually my age, he looks like he's probably like 17, he's got kind of that Tom Holland vibe going on, where he looks like a total kid, but he's actually, you know, a little bit older. Um, he He's going to be playing Cyborg in this, and I'm actually really excited. Um, I know that in the Justice League, they leaned heavy into, like, CGI for the costume, which was cool. It was great, but that's going to be a big budget um, uh, production, and I hope that we can get a little bit of a different type of cyborg. I hope that it's a lot more practical effects. Um, maybe they lean into some more costume and makeup, and I would hope it's not so much makeup as it is costume and makeup um, to, to make up. Uh, the look of Cyborg, because that would be a lot cool. That would be a lot cooler to have a little bit of a different touch there. I know you guys might differ, you might defer in your preference there. Let me know in the comments if you hope they dive a lot more into the CGI for his for his look, or if you hope they save the C CGI for things like the fight sequences or when he uses his sonic blaster or the varying effects, you know, transforming abilities and things like that. Because um, he, you know, cybernetically, technologically, he can morph his arms and limbs into. Um, useful tools, you know, rocket packs and stuff like that. Um, just cool stuff. Cyborg's awesome. And I hope that they uh, they save a lot of that budget for some more action sequences and um, just cool, cool in-story um, uh, power use. That's what I'm kind of going for there. That's what I would like to see and I hope that they do differentiate there. But that is not really why I'm making this video. I have a theory for you guys. So if you guys stuck around this long, I've got something special for you. This is something I haven't heard anybody talking about, so I think I'm going to be the first one mentioning this. But recently, and in the last, I think it was like the last six months, maybe maybe six months ago, Walter Hamada stepped up and took over Warner Brothers and DC. They had some turmoil before. They didn't have any agreement on the direction they wanted to take the DC universe. It was kind of this, we need to step up and make money like Marvel's making money, so we're going to make this giant DC universe despite the fact that Man of Steel was not really set up to branch out into a bigger universe, but that's kind of what the fans wanted because we got a taste for what Marvel was doing and DC was like, hey, it's probably not that hard to do. So they went ahead and did that, but they, they, they didn't get the groundwork built first. They jumped right into the, the world at large and that I think was a bit of a mistake. Um, probably not so much in the formula of how that could go down, but how they executed it was pretty poor. And I think a lot of people can, uh, agree upon that. I mean, I enjoyed the films. I've enjoyed every DC film so far. thought they were all fun, but there, I've also had issues within those films, just like many of you guys. A lot of people actually despise those films for uh, the flaws that they contain, but um, I can still appreciate that. You guys probably know me by now. You know I'm a bit of an optimist. So I wanted to get into this. Now, um, the old rule at DC between the films and the TV, you know, DC TV, DC movies, um, it was that they would never allow crossing. You know, they would never cross over. A lot of the people on the, in the Arrowverse, when Arrow had launched and they got the Flash going, they were very excited when they announced they were going to be doing a Justice League and they were going to have the Flash on there. Who are they going to cast? This was before they had announced Ezra Miller was in the running. But everyone was saying, just adopt the Flash. You know, let's get let's get this whole thing going. Bring it all together. That you have a wonderful universe in the, in the CW. It's a little bit odd because it didn't start out heavily comic book. It was inspired by comics. Then it, that became the primary fandom. So they shifted gears and started going from the CW kind of like Smallville soap opera style. Even though it was already darker, it was a, it was a different beast. But you know what I'm talking about. It was it was more geared towards like. This is Laurel Lance. She's not the Black Canary, but we're just going to kind of give you this like romantic drama. And then they shifted gears towards the comic book aspect because that's where the fandom lied. So they shifted, but then the, the movies was like, no, no. Movies is where we make all of our money. We don't want to do that. Um, anything that happens on the Arrowverse is completely separate from the movies. And Stephen Amell and Grant Gustin, they came out and said, 
wow, we're very disappointed about this. This is very disheartening. You could tell watching the interviews when they were talking about these things that it was actually um, a, a sore spot for these guys. They really, really wanted their shot to be the Green Arrow in a movie or to be the Flash in a movie. And um, uh, I remember Stephen Amell had come out and uh, expressed a lot of disappointment that Grant Gustin was not picked for the role of the Flash because of this rule that you couldn't have them cross over. And then it shifted again to the point that when characters were starting, when movies were starting to get announced for the DC films, like Suicide Squad, there were already characters on Arrow, um, like uh, Floyd Lawton, you had Deadshot, you had Katana, you had Amanda Waller. They were building their own Suicide Squad within this universe, within the Arrowverse. But because the movie had been announced, um, they ripped those characters off of Arrow and said, you cannot use those characters anymore because we are going to be marketing them on the big screen. This caused a lot of problems um, between the TV uh, group and then also the film group. So now there's a division here. Tiny bit of animosity. I made a video a while back. You guys can go check it out. I'll probably put the link to this video in, uh, in here somewhere by the end. You can click on it. Uh, I'll put it in the description. When I went to um, a Comic-Con-like event, and I had gotten a chance to ask a question to Manu Bennett, who played Slade Wilson, Deathstroke, on Arrow. He was one of the better villains of the, of the entire TV series. Even to date, he was one of the best parts of that show. Um, and he's one of my favorite actors because of that role and what he did in The Hobbit. I just love the guy. Um, I got to ask him a question and he had to dodge it. You could tell based on mm. other interviews I'd seen online and then also what we saw in, uh, in that panel, the way that he handled the question, he's not really allowed to speak about that scenario, about the situation of him coming onto Titans or him being able to um, even come back onto Arrow. That was something that was supposed to be kept quiet, kept, un kept under wraps, but we know now that they don't want him to be in the, in the uh, DC TV world because Joe Manganiello is about to get his shot, uh, was about to get his shot in uh, Justice League. And he was about to make his premiere. It was a spoiler then. So we didn't get, we didn't get a shot uh, to see him really. So uh, it was kind of this thing he didn't really, he wasn't allowed to talk about, but you could tell he was just dodging the question. Nope, don't want to talk about it. He wasn't being rude. That's just what was happening. He just wasn't allowed to talk. And um, so you can, from all the interviews that we've seen, we know that there had been animosity at that time between the studios. This being said, I know this is a lot guys, but try to track with me here. Anyone, films take priority, TV does not. If the TV characters um, are about to be used in movie, in movie universe, then these guys have to back off. So the TV has to back off and these guys come in, take the character, they, they put their own cast on it, they write their own stories, and these guys have to fade into the shadows as if it doesn't exist. And so that's how it had been. But now that Walter Hamada has taken over, we've seen a lot more characters come back to light um, that are that were supposedly supposed to be taking place in the movie universe, but now they're allowed to be back on the TV show. So who am I talking about? So first, let's talk about who was on the show that got ripped because they were going to get onto the movies. We have characters like Deadshot, characters like Katana. Let me just refer to my notes down here. Amanda Waller. We have uh, Deathstroke, Captain Boomerang. He got outed and he wasn't allowed to be back. Um, Superman. Uh, even though he was already, like, Man of Steel was already there. They allowed that on, C on CW's um, Supergirl. I'm not sure why. I have no idea why. Um, but they did. They allowed that with Tyler Hoechlin, um, even though Henry Cavill was still doing that on the big screen. Then there was The Flash. But they couldn't get around that because The Flash already had his, a whole TV show about him before the movie Justice League was coming out and they needed The Flash on the big screen. So that was already set in stone, in motion. He wasn't an extra character. He was the main character of the TV show called The Flash. They couldn't get around that. Um, but they, uh, you know, you could tell they were being like snubbed. Not snubbed really because I mean they wanted to have creative liberty in the big screen anyway to not be tied to whatever's happening on the small screen. And frankly, I do agree with that. But there's a little bit of hypocrisy when you say they're separate so they can do whatever they want and not be interrupted by the other. However, these guys can't pick characters that these guys have because they're separate. 
That doesn't make sense. Why, why can't they both be there? If they're separate, they should totally be able to exist in different universes with different stories. We could have the, the Grant Gustin Flash over here. We can have the Ezra Miller Flash over here and they're totally different. They're both Barry Allen, but they're both totally different. Played different with a different story, with a different background. Iris is black here. Maybe Iris is a ginger over here or brunette or who cares, you know, it doesn't matter. But you can have different stories with different iterations and it can be both wonderful, both unique in different ways. I really like Grant Gustin's Flash. I love, you know, the traditional Justice League animated series Flash. I love a ton of different versions of the Flash. I have nothing against Grant Gustin's Flash because it's different. I can enjoy it in a different way. And um, I feel the same way about Ezra Miller's Flash. It's different, it's a little quirky, but I like it, it's fun. Um, and so I think this is something that Walter Hamada recognizes. He's given Jeff Johns the reign uh, to create, they, they gave him a production studio, a, a company, sorry, production company, and he's going to be heading a lot of the writing for the DC films, a lot of the creative uh, influence and, and like the okays and the yes, and I'm going to be uh, creatively inputting into the writing and the screen, and then he's also going to be on as a producer, and uh, he might even direct at some point, I don't know if he will direct, but he will produce for sure, because uh, it's his production company, that's what he's going to do. So he, um, and I think he's starting with the Green Lantern Corps, but you can already tell that there's some influence there with the Shazam movie and then also the Aquaman movie where they both lean into the comedy, um, which is great because uh, Aquaman, I mean, it could very well be like Man of Steel, like where it's really like serious and dark and it's good and Man of Steel was awesome. But w from what we've already been introduced with Aquaman, he's a funny guy and he, um, he kind of like, he's got his issues. But he kind of, he uses like a little bit of humor there as like a self, you know, it's like a defense mechanism to just kind of cope with his sad life, uh, sad life existence. Very sad, wrestles with alcoholism. Um, it's, it's got darker elements, but he uses humor. That's one thing I like about that. But you wouldn't have gotten that beforehand because DC was always, like if you ask anybody who's like a, a, a casual fan or even someone who, you know, might be hardcore, They'll tell you the same thing, you know, Marvel's for the kids and DC is always dark and it's gritty and that's how it's supposed to be. Well, actually it's not. If you've read Shazam comics, there are things in there that are darker, like Black Adam, but Billy Batson is a funny character and his character Shazam is quite comedic. I mean, it's a, it's a funny comic. If you read like Green Lantern, he gets sassy, you know, like he gets, he gets kind of like snarky and sarcastic and... I mean, it's, it's jokes and jokes and jokes in all these different things. I mean, if you read Batman, there's not a lot of jokes unless you've got Robin or Nightwing or a funny villain or something like that. Um, it's, it's very limited, but that's, the, that's what people recognize as DC because those are the only films that have ever been really made. Batman films, occasional Wonder Woman events, and, and Superman as well. But they've always tried to keep it serious with DC, and I think it's time for that change. Um, not because they need to be like Marvel. I don't think that at all. What I do think is they need to be true to the source material and I'm, I'm seeing that with the Shazam trailer and with Aquaman's trailer. Um, I think that's going to be really good. Even though Jason Momoa's Aquaman is like brown hair, he's Islander, he's not like the blonde, blue eyes, whatever. But they did blonde the tips a little bit and they gave, they, they gave us the tease of the classic costume with the scales and the green and the, and the orangey yellow type stuff um, and the trident. And, you know, they're teasing these things they're, they're respecting the source material to a grand degree. I'm very excited. Very excited. Now, uh, I, love, I love these rabbit trails we go on. I'm going to try to bring it right back here for you guys. All those characters that got snubbed. Walter Hamada saves the day. After the shakeups, uh, you know, he kind of basically like fires the board, including Jeff Johns. And then Jeff Johns gets reapplied back into the creative seat where he belongs. He is the hero that the DC universe and fandom need right now to bring the, the, all the movies back to the heart of who those characters are instead of just being a marketing machine, which yes, they have to be, but uh, which is not wrong, it's fine, but the heart of the writing and the script and the story and the directing should be for the art of the comic book story. That's what it should be. Stay true to the character, stay true to the relationships the character has with his villains, with his allies, with himself, you know, the struggles that he has or she has or whatever the situation is, 
the, keep that true to who they are and who the fans recognize them to be. Um, and that's going to be important for the success of these things. I mean, if you get Batman running around gunning down criminals and running them, plowing them over with a Batmobile and firing off actual guns, people aren't going to take to that very kindly. I mean, like you want to push the boundaries of dark, that's fine. Stay true to the character. That's what has to happen. Walter Hamada is doing this. And I'm going to prove it. With Cyborg being cast for the Doom Patrol, we know that they're allowing Ray Fisher to continue. They already have Cyborg's movie still on the slate for a future release. I don't have the date for that pulled up, but it's still there. They're still planning the Cyborg movie. And now they've, re they've cast another individual onto the TV series to play Cyborg in the Doom Patrol. He's a younger guy, younger, smaller than Ray Fisher, but this is what it is. Why is this important? This is important uh, because of uh, timing. When, when does this take place and what order is this taking place? And is it going upstream to the big screen or is it going downstream, downstream to the small screen? It's going downstream. None of these transitions have happened that way so far. Any character that's on the big screen does not appear on the small screen afterward without a special, like special reasoning and special permission. And um, Cyborg is not an A-list character. He is a B-list character. And uh, some people are gonna be like, oh, he's A-list. No, he's not. He's actually a B-list character. He's not one of the original seven, but lately they've been pushing him more and more into all these different things. Um, you know, like Doom Patrol, um, he was on Titans. I'm shocked that they didn't apply him there, but they have their plans for Doom Patrol. Obviously, they know what they're doing. They're going to, um, you know, have fun with that. I can't wait to see that, see what they're going to do there. But he was on the big screen first, and now they're giving him a, a TV show, not the main character like they did with Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie was the Suicide Squad Harley Quinn. She's getting an animated TV series uh, on the DC streaming service, same actress. So that kind of doesn't really count because we're talking about um, the TV series differing from the, the actual movies. This, this cyborg is going to be different. It's a different time. It's probably a different universe. Um, the cyborg in the, in the TV looks to be, um, there's, he's supposed to be pretty young, but he looks like he's a little bit older and he just came out of like high school. He just had that accident. Um, he's been being experimented on. There probably hasn't been any missions between what we saw in Justice League and when he actually got his powers. It's pretty right away. So unless this younger actor is, is playing an older cyborg, which I doubt, then uh, yeah, I think we have ourselves an alternate universe that is not connected to the movies, but they're allowing this to happen. Just like how they're allowing the, the Gotham City Sirens or, um, and then I think also the Birds of Prey. Yeah, it was the Birds of Prey. The Birds of Prey has Batwoman, but Batwoman is getting her spot on the Arrowverse in Arrow the next season. I think it's season, what is that, six? Seven? No, it's seven. Arrow season seven. And then after that, they've already confirmed she's getting her own show. That's, a, that's crazy because now they're allowed, they know they have plans for the big screen. Beforehand, they'd never allow this. They'd never allow that to happen where someone who's going to the big screen is getting that because they were pulling characters off of Arrow and Flash um, because... They had plans for them on the big screen. Nope, you can't have it. We can't have two characters exist in the same, at the same time in different universes. It doesn't make sense, but that's how it was. Now that Walter Hamada took over, we're seeing, okay, even though Cyborg's here, he gets his own show here. It's totally separate, but that's perfectly fine. We don't care. That's gonna be awesome. Everyone's gonna love it, booyah. And now we have Batwoman. She, they've already confirmed they want, they want the um, Birds of Prey and like Gotham City Sirens. I don't know if she'll show up in that one, probably just Birds of Prey. But in Birds of Prey, and then now she's gonna be on Arrow and she's getting her own show here. Separate actresses, most likely, we don't know who's gonna be in the, in the Birds of Prey movie, but it's probably separate because every other one is separate. And they're okay with this. I think we've seen a shift in the tide and I'm so excited because this means we can probably, I don't know if we will, but we'll probably get Manu Bennett back as Deathstroke because he was a fan favorite Yes, everybody wants to see Joe Manganiello play Deathstroke, um, just like Boss Logic had predicted, and then he got, they, he got hired because of Boss Logic's art. It, it's so exciting. I'm so excited. 
Um, we might get uh, any number of characters might show up from now on. It's so good. I can't wait to see maybe Captain Boomerang's gonna come back. Maybe we're gonna get a Flash season where it's not one antagonist, but maybe the actual rogues gallery, like the, the primary like six or seven villains from the Flash are gonna all team up and it's, we're gonna get to see a different kind of season where it's not just one overarching bad guy, but it's a crew of bad guys collaborating together to try to take over the city. And then we get the Flash having to take them all down either one by one or he, you know, they all attack him at first and he can't beat them, but then he learns to take them out one by one. You know, it could be any number of things. I'm excited to see what they could do. I think this could heavily improve the DC TV universe, but it's also going to allow the DC movie universe to grow and mature in a way that they can just focus on their own thing. You know, like they can focus, they can, they can stop worrying so much about the world building and just give us a good Shazam movie. Just give us a good Aquaman movie. Make Wonder Woman 2, just like how Wonder Woman 1 was. I mean, there was a little bit of tie-in with Bruce in the beginning on the computer, the letter, and then it ties in, you know, because she's telling that story in hind it's like a memory. But they could do the same thing where the movie is basically self-contained in the Wonder Woman movie. You can give us that Supergirl movie they're writing. That could be good too. Um, I, I have no idea who they're going to cast. There's probably a million people that could play that role. But um, I'm just... I'm just excited if they if they're willing to focus buckle down and just focus on giving us a good movie one at a time maybe later down the road they could just bring the actors together they don't have to build the world together every single movie that's not what marvel did i'm not saying do what marvel did i'm just saying marvel didn't do that they gave us a good iron man movie then they gave us a hulk movie you know then they gave us Thor and they give Thor had a little bit more tie in, but you know, Captain America and Thor, there was just an end credit thing that just small little scene just to kind of like piece it one little piece at a time, one little piece. The movies themselves were pretty self contained, and I think that would be the best move for the DCEU. Take like four or five years with no crossover events, no big crossover events. You can have a cameo, one little cameo that is not significant to any plot. It maybe just happens a little bit, like just as a kind of like a, whoa, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's Superman, Shazam! You know, like that kind of like, wow, you know, like Billy Batson geeking out kind of like I am right now. And you just, you know, he, you get those tiny little moments that are sweet and cool, just a, just a little tease, you know, just a tease, just a touch. And uh, that will do really well for the DC. And then way later down the road, you could get a bigger event, a Justice League 2 or, you know, whatever you want. Um, you could do anything like that. So that's my spiel. This is kind of my theory is that D to summarize this whole theory, DC is on the right track again. Separate universes can have any character they want. Even if they're on, there's a Batman here and a Batman here. They're different. And it's okay to have both. We could be getting this very soon, I believe, because of Walter Hamada. Thank you, sir. And thank you, Jeff Johns. I know you probably had a lot of input into this. Um, I'm very grateful to whoever's decision it was to allow these kinds of things, a double cyborg or a, you know, a double Batwoman or whatever it is, because we just get more content. I mean, we're willing to buy the subscription we want, to, we want to have more DC stuff. We want to talk about these shows, talk about the movies. The more we have, the more we're going to consume, I guarantee it. I mean, just look. Look at all my DC stuff. I, get, I got all my DC stuff on this side. Marvel stuff over there, but you know. Either way, it's like we want content. We love the content. So give us the content. We're going to get it. And the more Batmans you have, the more Batmans we're going to watch, even if it's on Gotham. <laughs> Kind of a sad excuse for Batman, but it's a great show. Gotham is a great show. Anyway, uh, that's enough for this tangent. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really want to hear from you guys in the comments. Do you guys think that I'm correct in this assessment? Do you think that Walter Hamada has turned the tide and might, we might even get the Suicide Squad back on Arrow? That might even be the next season. You know, we might get to see the Longbow Hunters and then he might have to call in the Suicide Squad because now they got the rights back. How cool would that be? That'd be, that'd be like the greatest thing ever. I, I, would, I would absolutely love that. We, could, we might even get the Michael Rowe Deadshot back. He was amazing. I loved Michael Rowe as Deadshot. That was so good. Let's just get some of that, that good old, good old back on the TV shows. Um, make these TV shows the best they can possibly be with no restrictions to who or what they can use or do in the shows. 
Let's just tell some good stories and have some fun. And the same goes for the movie universe in or out of the DCEU. So thank you guys for watching. You guys stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend. Booyah! Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend, and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.